this morning. How many brought a praise? Come on, you know that there's power in your praise when you give it with all your heart. Come on. When you trust in the Lord God Almighty to fight your battles, your praise becomes a weapon. Come on. Just somebody thank the Lord right there this morning that your battles are won already in Christ's name. Amen. Let's just be excited about our Lord this morning. Come on. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds. Come on. We praise you. We praise you. Savior Jesus Christ and uh, and I want to share with you just some thoughts that the Lord put in my heart kind of things that we some of you might know this already but you know sometimes we just need to hear the word over and over again because the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God so we overcome the enemy by the word of God by the word of our testimony and so if you have your Bibles this morning I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians 11 1 Corinthians 11 and of course, when we talk about the Lord's Supper, I want you to understand, people of God, and even those of you that are watching uh, us on Facebook and live stream, you can participate with us and you can join with us. Amen. You can find maybe a, uh, some crackers at home 
or maybe a piece of bread or maybe some juice, some grape juice or whatever. And, uh, and you can participate with us right there where you're at. You know, and I have seen God do miracles, signs and wonders when we partake of the Lord's Supper. But it's not just that we take the Lord's Supper. We need to understand why we do it. Amen. And so there's two important ordinances that have been given to us by, the, by God through the New Testament church. We are the people of God. We are the New Testament believers. But we have two ordinances that God wants us to administer to in the New Testament. They don't save us. They don't redeem us. Neither one of these ordinances that I want to share with you, they don't wash you with the blood. They don't make you whole. They don't make you right with God. But they are things that we do as a result of our salvation, as a result of what God has done in our lives. And the first one is water baptism. You know, once you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to go, and go ahead and get water baptized. Amen. When you get water baptized, you are... You are letting the world know that you are a true follower of Jesus Christ. And, and so if you haven't done that, amen, get with your pastors, get with your leaders of the church so that we can set up a time, set up a moment. We like to do that once a year in the summer, but, you know, maybe the parks are not accessible right now, but we can still make a, a place and a time where we can gather together and have a special time where we can baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But the difference now in this ordinance that we're doing this morning is the Lord's Supper is water baptism for a believer only has to be done once in your lifetime. Only once. There's other people that have said, you know, Pastor, can I get rebaptized? You know, I, I just was not walking with God for a season, kind of slipped away and maybe backslid. But so, of course, I say that's between you and God. But really, in actuality, water baptism only has to take place once in your life as a believer. Because as a Christian, God's will is for not for us to be saved over and over and over again. God's will is that we're sealed in the Holy Spirit of God. And as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, we might have problems, we might have difficulties, but we never lose our salvation if we keep our eyes on God and we keep our focus on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. But the difference between the Lord's Supper and water baptism, both of them are ordinances in the Christian church. The difference is this. Water baptism only needs to be done once. But the Lord's Supper, the Bible teaches us as often as we do it. In other words, it should be perpetual. It should be ongoing. We don't stop ever taking the Lord's Supper, no matter how many years we've been saved. No matter how many years we've been born again. So one of the things that I want to share with you is that it's a pattern. Look at the Lord's Supper this morning as a pattern. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and the Bible tells us that there's something that we need to do perpetually in regards to the Lord's Supper. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians, or second, if you have 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and with verse 26 now. It says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, Notice, as often, in other words, it's perpetual, it's more than once, as we, as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So I want you to understand that. This should be a normal part of your walk with God. Maybe you're dealing with a sickness. Maybe you're dealing with a, a, a mountain in your life. Let me encourage you to take the Lord's Supper. Take the communion with God. You don't have to wait till once a month. You can, it can be a perpetual habit in your walk with God. As I said, I've seen God do great miracles in my life because of what it represents. And then the second thing I want you to understand, just three little thoughts. The second thing I want you to understand about the Lord's Supper or communion is that it must be personal. It must be personal. In other words, the Bible tells us now in, in this scripture that I want to share with you, um, and 1 Corinthians 11 as well tells us that we need to examine ourselves. Verse 27 now. 1 Corinthians 11, 27. Therefore, whosoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the, and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Let a man examine himself. So let him eat of, the, of this bread 
and drink of the cup. So we need to do some self-examination. It needs to be personal. The, if you take the cup and you take the bread this morning and, you know, if you're looking around and you're not really focusing on God or focusing on somebody else, then you miss the point. Because communion is about you and your personal relationship with God. It's a reflection of how much you love the Lord. It's a, it's a reflection of, you know, do I remember what Jesus did for me and saving my soul? And if he saved your soul, then you focus on that. You focus on the blood. You focus on the body that was broken for you. So we, so we know it's a pattern. The Lord's Supper is a pattern that ought to be practiced in our lives often and then number two it's it's personal we need to take it personal but then also one important thing and I close with this thought is that the Lord's Supper or communion is also regarding patience we must be patient with one another because the Bible tells us that the that the Corinthian church they were taking communion they were taking the Lord's Supper but guess what they were forgetting their brothers they were forgetting their sisters they were not walking in unity they were not walking in communion. They were not walking in one accord. And then we find in verse 33 of 1 Corinthians 11, 33. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. When you come together to eat, he was talking about the Lord's Supper. Wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, we'll just let him go eat at his home. Let him, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I'll set in order when I come. So... This is not to replace, you know, anything that we do in the natural. This is this is the house of God. Yes. This is what we honor God. With. It's sacred. It's holy. Amen. Now, there's no mystical power in the cup. Right. There's no mystical power in the bread. But what does it represent? And I just want to remind you, some of you know this already. But what does it represent? When we take the bread, and that's going to be the first thing that we do in just a moment. The ushers are going to give you. I'm going to ask the ushers to begin to... Help me by passing out. We're going to do a little bit different this morning. We're going to ask you to just stay where you're at for just a moment. Stay seated and then we'll stand up in a moment. But you don't have to come as you notice the table is not in the front like we normally do. But we have the table in the back this morning. And we're going to serve you today. We're going to serve you. And the ushers are going to do that. And so I want you to understand that when you take a piece of bread and when you take that cup, what does it represent? Well, that bread represents the body of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. that was broken for you. That's why when we administer the Lord's Supper, you hear us say often, whether it's me or my wife or anybody else, you hear us say, now go ahead and break a little piece of that bread. Because it's a symbol of that body of Jesus that was broken for you. The Bible says that when Jesus was on the cross, he was so disfigured, he looked like a dying animal. He did not even look like a human being. He was so bloody, so messy, so ugly looking. He became sin, the Bible says, for us. He who knew no sin, Jesus, became sin for us. And he, was even, he wasn't even recognizable as a human. See, that's what that body, that bread represents. When you take that bread this morning in just a few moments, and we're going to ask you to wait. Once you get it, don't eat it right away. Just wait, and I'll give you instructions so we can do it collectively together. But what does the juice represent? Well, that juice represents the blood of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bread speaks of the body of Jesus. Everybody say the body of Jesus. Body. And now that juice represents the blood of Jesus. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. In other words, the only thing that could wash away our sins, kind of an unusual thing if you think about it. Why would blood, how does blood cleanse us? You would think water, maybe, you know, something clear, but blood? Well, you got to understand, the Bible says that Life is in the blood. If you take out the blood of a human being, guess what? You have a corpse, someone, you, you don't have life. It's, you're dead. So when the pump is, you know, when the blood is pumping in your, in your lungs, in your heart, in your oxygen, guess what? There's life, there's vitality. Well, when Jesus, guess what he did? He gave up his life on the cross. He gave up his blood. I heard a preacher say one time, if there was anything I would like to take back that day, 2000, over 2,000 years ago on the cross. It wouldn't be the crown of thorns. It wouldn't be the nails. It wouldn't be the beams that he was hung on. It wouldn't be any of his clothing. The preacher said, there's one thing I could take. If I could take back as a souvenir, I'll take one drop. 
I'll take one drop of the blood of Jesus. Amen. There's still power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is stronger than any addiction. The blood of Jesus is stronger than any bondage. The blood of Jesus is stronger than anything that you're dealing with today. Any sickness, any disease, stronger than cancer, stronger than diabetes, stronger than COVID-19. The blood of Jesus is powerful. And all we have to do is accept it. We just have to accept it. There's only one requirement, only one requirement this morning to take communion and take the Lord's Supper, the bread and the, and the juice. Only one requirement. Here it is. You must be saved by the blood of Jesus. You must be saved by the blood of Jesus. So only you know that. Even if you're young, you, there's no age limit to being saved. So as the ushers pass out the uh, juice and the bread, go ahead and do that now, brothers, that I want you to keep that in mind. Hold it in your hands for right now. Don't drink it just yet. Don't eat that bread just yet. But we're going to do it together. And as we do that together, we're going to begin to worship the Lord. And the song says, I still believe. Amen. No matter how many years we've been saved, no matter what we've gone through in life, no matter what storms we face, we still believe in Jesus. We still believe in the Lord. You know, there was a family one day I heard that was taking a vacation in the summer. And they were going to this area where it was kind of, you know, the hills and the valleys and the beautiful trees. And so the dad said, I'm going to roll down the windows in the family and their, and their station wagons. I'm going to roll down the windows. And they were on the highway driving. And they were just enjoying the wonderful breeze of the wind of that area as they were on the highway and the road vacationing in the summer. And as all the windows were down, all of a sudden, a bee, a bee flew into that car of that family. And all of a sudden, the little girl in the back seat, she started, she started panicking. She started crying. She was overwhelmed because that little girl was allergic to a bee sting. In fact, she had such an allergic reaction to a bee sting that if she would get stung by a bee, she could possibly die within an hour if she wasn't treated. And so they were driving in the car, and all of a sudden, the, the bee flies into that vehicle and pandemonium hit that little girl's heart and so the dad pulled over to the side and he was looking for that bee and he was able to trap that bee in the corner of the front windshield and he grabbed it and he cornered that bee and put his hand in the corner of that front windshield and he waited a few moments he grabbed that bee in his hand be, he released it after a while. And it still was flying around in that car. And the little girl still, still kept on crying and still walking in fear. Dad, the bee's still here. The bee, the bee is still alive. And the dad looked over the back seat of the car, looked at that his daughter, his girl. He said, look, that, I want you to know something to me, how that, that bee can't do anything to you. And what are you talking about? You see that stinger? It's in my hand. He can be flying around, but that bee don't have no more sting in him. The stinger is gone. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what Jesus Christ did for us. He died on the cross and took the sting of death and pain and sin and bondage. The devil can't sting you anymore. Hallelujah. I said the devil can't sting you anymore. Because Jesus Christ took the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet. Do you understand that this morning? You might be thinking, I got a lot of trouble, Pastor. I got a lot of issues going on in my life. Jesus already paid the price. The stinger is in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody to close their eyes, whatever to just
focus on God for just a few moments. As the worship team leads us in a song of worship and praise to God. Song says, I still believe. I want you to just take in the blood right now by faith. Take in the bread. Take in the, the body of Jesus by faith. Hallelujah. In a moment we'll stand. But let's just worship it right there where you see it. For just a few moments.
exalt your name today, God. We thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. And Lord, we still believe in you. We still believe in the price that you paid on Calvary's hill. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for not calling a legion of angels to rescue you that day. Thank you, Lord, for staying on that cross for six gruesome hours for our sin, to pay the penalty of sin in our lives. Truth be told, Lord, we were the ones that should have died on that cross. We were the ones that were full of sin and iniquity. But you came as the perfect Lamb of God to take away our sins. And we love you, Lord. And this morning, God, we are reminded of the sacrificial death that you paid for. And we will never forget it. Now prepare your heart now as we get ready to take the bread and we get ready to drink the cup. Paul said in, again, 1 Corinthians 11, 23, For I received from the Lord Jesus that which also was delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And as he took the bread, he broke it. I want us to do that right now. Just break a little piece of that bread, that wafer, that cracker, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's all take the bread in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And as we take in that bread, we take in our healing. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Now let's continue. In the same manner, he also took the cup. After supper, he said, This cup is the new covenant or testament or contract in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So now at this time, let's all take the juice that's in the cup in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's drink it all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Lord, as we drink the cup, we thank you that we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. You are not only the God that heals us of all of our diseases, but you're the God that forgives us of all of our iniquities and all of our sins. God, we thank you, Lord, that our sins this morning are not covered. They're removed. They're deleted. They're eradicated from our lives. And we put on the righteousness of God today. We thank you that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There is not one sin in our hearts anymore because the power of sin has been broken on the cross. And we are now new creations in Christ Jesus. Amen, church. And the Bible says, as often as we eat the bread and we drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. How many know that Jesus Christ is coming back? You may take your seats again. The ushers are going to come by and and they will uh, pick up your cups there. Amen. And again, we want to welcome you. Amen. To Livingstone Family Church. Amen. Thank you, people of God, for coming back to the house of the Lord. And um, also welcome our extended family friends that watch us on Facebook. We want to encourage you to, to not only share it, not only like us, but share those comments as well. We thank you for those wonderful, encouraging comments that you have said. And uh, we thank you for that. And uh, so we want to also just uh, welcome you and continue to, we're going to turn it over right now to First Lady and and, uh, and she's going to receive this morning. We're going to get ready to receive the tithes and the offerings of the Lord. Can we give God praise? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, I think we can do better than that. Can we give God praise? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He 
is worthy, amen. So if you need a tithe in our offering envelope, just raise your hand, amen. And our brothers will be more than happy to serve you if you didn't get a chance to grab one on your way in, amen. We do have them available um, in the back area as you enter, um, just as an FYI. And uh, if you'd like to just be proactive, amen, as you walk into the sanctuary and grab, amen, an envelope, you are more than welcome to do that. Well, this morning, amen, we just want to, again, extend our gratitude, extend our thankfulness, um, to each and every one of you that um, continue to give towards our sign, amen, that is in the making, that is in the works, amen, our Livingstone Family Church uh, lit sign that we're going to be having um, just in a few weeks, amen. So we know without a shadow of a doubt, amen, at this present time, we have $1,680 that have been collected, amen. A thousand of that, of course, like we said earlier, has already been put towards the um, startup of the project, amen, for the um, the gentleman that is working on that for us, amen. So we just want to encourage you, continue, amen, continue to give, continue yes. to obey the yes. Lord, yes. amen. Those of you that are watching this, amen, maybe you haven't been able to um, sow anything into our project, amen, but just know that you can pledge that to the Lord, pledge that in your heart, amen, and, and God will fulfill, amen, the desires of your heart. Yes. And you know, that scripture is so lightly taken sometimes, amen, that God is going to fulfill the desires of my heart. Well, there's, there's always a condition. Amen. To God fulfilling the desires of our heart. And that condition is, does it line up with his word? Does it line up with him being glorified? Does it line up with his kingdom being propelled forward? Amen. And hearts being uh, touched and lives being changed. So when you quote that scripture, always quote, always think back to yourself with that quote and that scripture. Keep in mind, are my desires lining up with God's heart? Are my desires lining up? Do what I want to do, does it glorify God or is it just selfish ambition it's just is it just being selfish for myself amen and so today we know without a shadow of a doubt those of you amen that are here in the house we know you have a giving heart we know you have a, a heart that's grateful amen never be ungrateful for what God has blessed you with amen and when we start showing ungratefulness we need to be careful because that part of that is pride part of that is pride where pride rises up and pride says I don't need to give anything I just come in, I get free food, I get fed free, and then I leave. That's really what it is. You can't go into any restaurant and eat for free unless your friend is paying for you. But somebody's paying for it. So you may sit here, you may think it's free food spiritually. But guess what? There's other people that are paying for your free meal. Because that meal took days, it took weeks, it took, it took hours of recipe and cultivating and throwing in ingredients. And I'm talking about the Word of God. As the word comes to you, know that the man of God has sat in the kitchen in the spirit and has prepared a lavish meal for all of us. And so when that meal is served, amen, he's taking it from the menu of God's word. And when that meal is served and we get the cornbread and we get the, the hash browns and we get the coleslaw and we get the, the, the big chicken and we and we get the asparagus. You know, I'm trying to think healthy here, amen. We're off our fast, but we need to keep that lifestyle, amen. And you know, when we get the salad of his word, it's to nourish our hearts and our spirits. And so this morning, don't take it lightly that your giving is not making an impact. Don't take it lightly that your presence here is not making an impact. Because you are being a blessing to the future of what God has in store for this house. You are being a blessing to what God, the souls God is going to bring and already bringing into this house. So today, be ready for the chef to come out in just a few minutes. Be ready for the chef to serve you the meal of God's word. And what do we do when we're ready? When we see our waiter coming with that big old tray coming already with our food. We sit up straight. We clear the table so we can make room. Clear the, 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 the mess of your heart today. Clear the room of your heart today. Open up your ears. Sit up straight. Be attentive. And listen to the word of God. Don't slouch. Don't put your head down on the chair like we see sometimes people doing. We don't do that when we're at a restaurant. We don't sit down and say, oh, yeah, serve me my food. I'm ready. No, we don't. We sit up. And we say, scoot over, make room for me, because I'm gonna, I'm ready to eat. Well, we're gonna be ready to eat in just a few minutes. We're gonna eat God's word this morning, amen. So bow your heads with me. Continue to give, amen. You can give by many ways. Venmo, Cash App. We've already posted those, amen. And thank you again, those that are live stream that give as well. Bow your heads, Father. We honor you right now.
We worship you in our giving, Father God. Because what you have so freely given to us, Lord, you, all you ask, Father God, and all you command of us is that we obey what your word already has told of us to do, Father. You've already said of us, Father God, to give you the 10%, to give you what already is yours, Lord. So today, we don't have sticky hands. We don't have hearts that want to steal or take anything that doesn't belong to us today, Father. We honor you with our offerings. We honor you with our tithe. We honor you even with the extra that you are asking of us to give towards the vision of this house. And Lord, we thank you, Father, that we don't pray for more income and resources, but we pray for wisdom to use the income and the resources that you've already given us to use them wisely, to use them and manage them as you would see fit for your kingdom, for our household, for our families, and for the people of God. And Lord, today we will be careful to give you the honor, to give you the glory, and to say thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Are you blessed today, church? Come on up and give it to the Lord this morning. Not only that, 
but you've created an atmosphere in which people can come and worship and, and praise God. So I thank you, I honor you, Bishop and First Lady, for this place, this platform, and this place where we can come and, and partake of the presence of God. Amen? Amen, people? Amen. Thank you. And we'd be remiss if we didn't give honor to the worship leader, the, the person who really has led us into incredible worship. Without her, the presence of God really wouldn't be like it is here. And as I've mentioned before, I have been to many, many churches, large churches. I was a guest at uh, Hillsong in London years ago. And so I've been, and, and I was an associate pastor at some of the largest churches in the world, really. And then some of the smaller churches in the world as well. And there's nothing like this place. There's nothing like the presence of God in this place. And that comes because of the worship team. They're not the worship team me, but the worship leader. And, and the bishop who was allowed, and also through his prayer and fasting and yes. leadership, yes. Uh, has allowed this. So it's an incredible thing. And then I, and as I was thinking about this yesterday, so thank you all, all of you. My brother, they happen to be my brother and my sister. They happen to be. But really, there is no place like this. I've been around the world, and, and the worship here is incredible. I also wanted to say that uh, uh, before you guys sing. You know, I, I have three boys, and then I have I have my daughter uh, Natasha, and uh, I, I can tell you that first of all, I love you very much, and I'm very very proud of you. I told her this the other day. I whispered to her when we were in church. I said, you know, I thought about this. Of all my kids, she's the only one who is actively seeking the presence of God in His direction. I mean, the only one that's faithful in church, and she's the one. If anybody has an excuse not to come yes, to church, right. it would be her. Yes, she's got five kids, yes. including a little, you know, little baby, and our, my granddaughter. And she has, and she had COVID, you know, about a month ago. Wow. She's over it now. I mean, if anybody has a reason not to come right. to church, right. she would be the one. But she's the one that's faithful, Amen. and she gets the kids up. She yes. takes care of the kids, and she brings them. She gets them dressed. So I honor you, and I thank you, and I love you, and I appreciate you very, very much. Jesus. Amen. Thank you. And then finally, to my wife, who is, uh, you know, she teaches your kids and my kids and my kids. And so she's part of the worship team. She's an incredible. I've seen her also all over the world. She takes a hold of a class of kids and settles them down and teaches them the Word of God. And there are kids right now who are in their 30s, almost 40. And they still remember some of the songs and some of the lessons that they learned when they were little kids like yes. your kids and grandkids. Yes, yes. So what she's doing is just incredible. And then one final thing. I'm sorry, Bishop. I just had to say all this. It was, it was in my heart all, all yesterday. For my, well, a couple weeks ago, uh, Cash, my oldest, he's 13 years old. He said, we were just talking about the church after we went to lunch or something. And he said, he just he doesn't talk very much. He's the, he's the quietest one. It's not like his dad who, talks to everybody and everything. He's very quiet. And he said, just out of the blue, he said, the service was beautiful. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Wow. I know at 13 years old, I would not have said that. I don't care how beautiful the service was. <laughs> I was not thinking about beautiful services. I was thinking about pretty girls probably or something else. But for my 13-year-old young man, handsome, handsome as all get out, he says, the service was beautiful. And that's a testament to him and to his mom that brings him on Sundays. And then a couple, uh, a couple weeks ago, my granddaughters came to my wife and said, Grandma, can we sing? We want to sing for the Lord. We want to sing in church. And how do you say no to that, right? How do you say no to that? And so we asked the pastor, and he graciously said yes. So to have my granddaughters up here wanting, we didn't make them, we didn't say it better, so, you know. They Thank want you, to Jesus. sing yes. before the Lord and Thank for you, you and for the Lord. It's just an incredible honor and privilege. I feel so humbled Hallelujah. and so blessed Amen. that my granddaughters and my grandsons are here. Amen. And that my granddaughter, they want to praise the Lord in the song. Amen. So yes. here you go. Um, we need two microphones, though.
Thank you, Lord. I don't know which mic is mic. Right. Whichever one is. You got this one on? All right. Praise God. Beautiful. Amen. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful anointing on these young girls. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, you know, I was reminded of that time in the Bible where Jesus drove out the money changers and yeah. the priests and the scribes got mad because the children were worshiping God. Yeah, right. The children were crying out to God in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Amen. And then Jesus said that out of the mouth of babes yeah. and infants right. yes. and nursing babes shall I perfect praise. Amen. And so that's beautiful. Amen. When you see children serving the Lord yes. and uh, praising the name of Jesus. Let that encourage you, grandparents yes. and yes. other grand. Uh, fathers and mothers that are here today, amen, like my brother I know and his wife, Esther, they're very proud of them, yeah. and I know that the same anointing that's on these young girls right. is on your children, amen. is on your family, yes. amen, yes. and so just keep praying for your family, keep praying for your children, mm. that they will walk in the ways of God. We can release our little ones now to their class, mm. those of you who have class this morning, and, uh, and the rest of us, we're going to get into the word of the Lord today. And I'm excited to bring to you the word of the Lord. So can we all stand to our feet this Sunday morning and let's honor the word of God today. Yes, yes. You know, today is what they call Super Bowl Sunday. Yes. All right. Now, maybe your team, maybe your team is not playing today. Right. Amen. Maybe you're not a Chiefs fan. Maybe you're not a Buccaneers fan. But I tell you what, we're all fans of Jesus. Yes. We're all fans of the Lord. But, you know, those things fade away. That's right. You know, those things come and those things go. Mm. But one thing that never goes is the word of God. Amen. He says that my word is eternal. Yes. And it's forever and ever and ever. Isn't that good? Yes. So let's go to the eternal word today. If you have your Bibles, go with me to Acts 8. The book of Acts. Believe that God wants our churches to be a representation of the book of Acts. A book of action, a book of apostolic anointing. Amen. <clears throat> so we're going to look at verse 26. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Stay with me as I'm going to jump through a few verses in this in this chapter. We're going to read first of all from verses 26 to 29. And then we're going to jump over to verse 34 and finish out around verse 40. Alright, so stay with me if you can. Acts chapter 8 verse 26. Amen. It says, Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip and said, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And this is a desert. And he arose and he went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch, a great man of authority under Cadence, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all of her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship. Verse 28. So returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. And verse 29. Now the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. Now let's jump over in that same chapter to verse 34. <clears throat> verse 34. Now the eunuch answered Philip, and said, I ask you, of whom does this prophet say this is? Of himself or of some other man? And Philip opened his mouth and the beginning at this scripture preached Jesus to him. And as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is some water. And he said, what hinders me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. And when he had came up, notice, when he had came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. Notice that. The Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went out of his way rejoicing. And 
then we'll finish off with verse 40. And Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Amen? Amen. And so I want to talk this morning on the subject, church, the momentum of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The momentum of the Holy Spirit. Mm. I believe that it was not just a miracle mm. in the physical that happened for Philip, our evangelist, as the Lord, Bible says, caught him away in a moment of time. But I believe that this also represents our walk with God yes. and how that God wants us to walk in the momentum and the energy and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. So remain stand and let's pray this morning and ask God to touch our hearts and touch our lives. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that we welcome in our hearts and our minds and our spirit. Lord, we pray today that we do no violence to your word, that you hide me behind thy cross and you allow me, Lord, to speak as the oracles of God, as a man from another world full of faith and fire and of the Holy Spirit of God. Lord Jesus, we pray according to Acts 2, 41, that this word would be received gladly in every heart and every soul, and that you would add to the church as such need to be saved. Lord, we cancel and rebuke every hindering spirit of the enemy, every stronghold of darkness. We bind and we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare, declare that you are Lord of all, that Jesus, you are Lord in this church. Yes. You are Lord in this house. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that every vain imagination is cast down. Yes. Give us ears to hear today the voice of your Holy Spirit. Hide me behind thy cross. And Lord God, we pray, oh Lord, that you not only anoint my lips, yes. but you anoint your people to receive this word today. Yes. In the mighty and the holy name of your son, Jesus. And everyone say amen. amen. And amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. You may be seated, church, in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk this morning on the subject, the momentum of the Holy Spirit. The momentum of the Holy Spirit. You know, somebody once said that when you're like butter, you need to stay on the road. Got a little bit slow this morning. When you're like butter, you need to stay on the road. In other words, once you've caught a wave of God's glory, don't slow down. Right. Don't yeah. stop yourself. Keep yeah. the momentum flowing. Hallelujah. Keep the momentum and the energy of God working in your life. Yes. Some of you right now, you just recently, and my brother was sharing earlier, of, of, of people in this family, in this life that have been converted to Christ. Mm. Well, keep that energy. Yeah. Keep that momentum. Mm. Keep that passion for God. Yes, the devil's going to try to attack you. Yes, the devil's going to try to hinder you right. and go another direction. Yeah. But if you just walk, in the momentum of God, you're going to get to your destiny. Right. You're going to continue to grow in the grace and yes. the knowledge of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Yes, yes. And so I believe that it's not uncommon. I want you to think about this for just a moment. It's not uncommon mm -hmm. to reach success. There's a lot of people who have reached the pinnacle of success. Right. But that's not what's unique. Mm -hmm. That's not what's uncommon. A lot of people can win. A lot of people can have levels of success. Right. But here's the difference. Can you maintain the momentum of victory? Yes. Yes. Can you maintain the character of God? Right. Because I believe that when you get to the top of the mountain, what keeps you there mm -hmm. is character right. and integrity. Yes. Yes. Come on. You know, they're talking about the Super Bowl today and and I remember as a little young man watching the Dallas Cowboys going to the Super Bowl. Mm. And I remember the star quarterback during my time in teenage years was number 12, Roger Staubach. And I love Roger Staubach. He incidentally was a strong believer, a strong yeah. Christian man. But I still remember that day they played the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think he kind of lost a little bit there when yeah. Jackie Smith dropped that yeah. ball in the end zone. Yeah. And I cried like a baby that day, I tell you what. But thank God I'm, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. But Roger Staubach said something powerful. And I want to I I share with you. He said, and I quote, he said, there are no traffic jams along the extra mile. In other words, there's not a lot of people going the extra mile. There's not a whole lot of people that want to maintain success. There's a lot of people reaching success. There's a lot of people having levels of, of victory, mm. 
But they're not a lot of people maintaining victory. Right. That's right. Amen. See, I want you to know, as a believer, you have a voice. Yes. Every believer has a voice. Mm. And that voice is the voice of victory. Amen. Let me say that again. Every believer has a voice. Mm. And that voice is not a voice of defeat. Amen. It's not a voice of sickness and affliction. Right. It's not a voice of darkness and unbelief mm. and compromise. The believer's voice is a voice of victory. Yes. No yes. matter what may distract your moment, the momentum that God's given you of success, mm. keep moving forward. Yes. Yes. Don't let the distractions of the flesh of other people, mm. of your critics. You know, Nehemiah, when he felt in his heart to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, he had some critics. He had some mockers. Yeah. He had some cynics. He had some people that said, oh, you're wasting your time yeah. rebuilding those walls of Jerusalem. On, in fact, he said, even the enemy, Sandala and the others and the Amorites, they came against him so much that they said, man, all it takes is one little fox. One little fox climbs up those walls and they're coming down. See, they were mocking the people of God. Yeah. They were mocking Nehemiah. And that's what happens. So many people, they, they look at you yeah. and they think what you what you got on the outside defines who you are. Right. But they don't know the dream yeah. that's inside of you. Yeah. They don't yeah. know that the vision that you've been given by God. Yeah. They don't know that the purpose and the call of God that's on your life. Yeah. And that's why you got to stay with the momentum of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. No matter what happens. No matter what tragedy, no matter what sickness, no matter what comes against you. Mm. Yeah. I heard a story about a man who went to the Super Bowl and he was so excited to get to the Super Bowl. And he was there, but he, he realized that the ticket that he had was on the very last row. I mean, it was the, the highest place in that stadium, could barely see the field. And so as the Super Bowl went on and it started, the game was about ready to start. He noticed right around the 50 yard line, there was some good seats. He noticed that there was one empty seat next to another gentleman. And so he said, well, you know what? I'm gonna go take a chance and just see if that seat, that empty seat is available. I mean, you gotta understand, he was way up on the top in the last row. He was glad to be there, but you know what? He said, man, if I can get a little closer, I wanna get closer. After all, this is the Super Bowl. So he made his way after the game started, he makes his way down to the 50-yard line, that row, and, uh, and he looks at the man that's right next to that empty seat. And he asked that man, he said, excuse me, sir. He said, is anyone sitting here? Hmm. And the man replied, no, no one's sitting here. He said, actually, the seat belongs to me. Hmm. He began to explain. He said, I was supposed to come with my wife, but she died. Hmm. He said to that man, this is the first Super Bowl that we haven't been at together wow. since we got married wow. in 1967. Mm. Wow, the other man mm. felt bad, felt sorry, and he responded, that's awful, that's terrible, how sad. Mm. He said, but the man looked at him and he said, but couldn't you find someone else to take the seat, a close relative or a friend? He said, no, they're all at the funeral. <laughs> yes. Yes. You gotta stick with the momentum. Come on, somebody. Just gotta keep going forward. <laughs> you know what I've learned about Christian ministry? It's twofold. Christian ministry for a true believer in God. And by the way, every believer has a ministry. Mmm. Can't get yeah, them this that's morning. right. Yes, they do. You need to get that revelation this morning. Every believer, as I said, every believer has a voice. Yeah. And that voice is the voice of victory. God has given every one of us that named the name of Christ a ministry. Mm. The Bible calls it the ministry of reconciliation. Mm. See, the Bible tells us the Great Commission is to go and preach the gospel to the whole world. Right. But we may not be able to reach the whole world. But we can reach somebody's world. Right, yes. I can reach people that God has called me in my sphere of influence. But there are places I can't go that only you can Amen. minister to yes, people. Yes, yes. There's people in your work, in your life, your family, friends, relatives, that only you can bring the gospel to. Amen. 
Amen. Only Amen. you can share the word of faith too. Yeah. So I want you to know that you have a ministry. Yes. You have a calling on your life Amen. to affect someone in your family that I can. Mm -hmm. See, most people, I've read the statistics, that get saved. Mm -hmm. They don't get saved by a preacher like me mm -hmm. bringing an invitation to come to Christ. Right. 80 to 85% of people, they tell me, the Barnum Research says, that come to Christ are through family and friends. Amen. Yes. 80 to 85% of people mm -hmm. that are born again today, mm -hmm. they didn't get saved through walking down an aisle in the church. Right. They, and if they did, more than likely, yeah. they were still, they were being witnessed to, they were being uh, told already by their family or their friends right. about the message of the gospel of Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. What am I saying? I'm saying that we as believers in God, we have been called to ministry. Yes. yes. Amen. And it's twofold. Christian ministry is not only public mm -hmm. in a group setting, right. in church, mm -hmm. if you will, or in a public gathering. That is Christian ministry. We're right now, what we're in right now, this is ministry. Yes. This is Christian ministry. We're in a public forum. We have gathered together in the house of the Lord. We have not abandoned fellowship. We have not forsaken the assembly of ourselves. Right. We're here to encourage you. We're here to lift you up. Amen. I tell people all the time that are working with me in the ministry. If you're going to work with me in the ministry, I don't need you to correct the sheep. Mm. I don't need you to correct the family. Right. I need you to encourage the people yeah. of God. Yeah. I need yeah. you to lift up the people yeah. of God. Yeah. I need you to love the people of God. I can do the correcting. Amen. Amen. I need you to do the support. I need you to do the uplifting. I need you to do the right. exhorting. Amen. See, Christian ministry is not only public, but it's also personal. What we do in this church should only be a reflection of what we should be doing outside the four walls of this church. Amen. Yes. Amen. In other words, we should be taking the anointing that's in this place, in the four walls of this church, and we need to take it to our school, take it to our neighborhood, yes. take it to our community, take it to our homes and our relatives and our friends. Mm. Because really, church doesn't start Till we dismiss. Amen. Amen. Church doesn't start. Amen. Amen. Until we say, God bless you. See you tomorrow. See you Wednesday. Amen. Come on, church. Right. Yes. We are the church. Amen. The Bible says, Know ye not that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We got the momentum of God. Yes. We got the passion of God. Yes. So we find this great evangelist. He is one of the first evangelists. That is known in the early church. His name is Philip. Philip the evangelist. He not only was an evangelist. But he was a food distributor. That was one of the seven. That was appointed in Acts 6 I believe. When the 12 disciples did not want to. Leave the ministry of prayer. And the word of God. But the widows were being neglected. In their daily food distribution. So they appointed seven. One of them was Philip. So he not only was a food distributor to the widows that were being neglected that needed help, mm -hmm. but also he had an anointing and a call on his life to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. I told you that the Bible tells us that there are what is called the five-fold ministry recorded in Acts 4. Mm -hmm. Bible says that he gave some to be apostles. That's the thumb because the apostle touches every ministry. Notice my thumb touches every finger yeah. because the apostle touches every area of ministry. It's the foundation. Mm -hmm. And then you have the next figure, which I believe is the role of the prophet. When a prophet speaks, he speaks usually like this. Thus saith the Lord, you better get it right or you're going to get left. Mm -hmm. And then you have the middle finger, which represents Philip, the evangelist. Mm -hmm. Come to Jesus. Every true evangelist is winning someone to Christ. Amen. Whether in a public form or in a private form. Yes. And then you have the pastor. That's the wedding ring. Because the true pastor, a true shepherd, is married Amen. to the church. Yes. Yes. A true pastor prays for you. Yes. A true pastor lifts you up before the Lord. Yes. A true pastor, if, you, if, if medical doctors tell us that this finger right here, it leads all the way, that vein leads all the way to your heart. Yes. A, true, a, a true pastor has a heart for God. Has a heart for the Lord. Has a heart to see lives change. And then you got the pinky. That's the teacher. What did he say? What was that Greek word? 
by the way, pastors and teachers, some Bible scholars believe that it's not a five-fold ministry. Some say it's a four-fold ministry because the pastors and the teachers are connected. I believe they're separate, but I believe because I believe that every pastor ought to be a teacher. Amen. Amen. But not every teacher necessarily is a pastor. Right, right, right. So I believe they're separate. So Philip the evangelist is rising up and we see an incredible move of God on his life. I want to read a little bit about it in Acts 8. Acts 8 and pick it up in verse 4. Acts chapter 8 verse 4. Therefore those who were scattered, the church, they were scattered now because of the persecution that came. There was tremendous persecution at this time. But when the church is persecuted, guess what happens? The church is also purified. Amen. I said when the church is persecuted, they are also purified. And we're cleansed. Because that's when the true followers of Jesus show up. A true follower of Jesus is not known and realized when everything is great. A real child of God shines in the darkness. Remember, stars shine the best in the dark. Christians are stronger than ever when we get persecuted. When Pharaoh put more pressure and more work and more labor and harder hours, longer hours on the children of Israel, the Bible says the more he afflicted them, the more they multiplied. So the church only grows through persecution. But look at that. They were scattered everywhere because of the persecution. But they were preaching the word. Mm. Persecution never stops the true church. Amen. I said persecution yeah. never yeah. stops the church. Yeah. We keep preaching. Yeah. We keep yeah. teaching the yeah. word. Yeah. Now verse 5. Now Philip went down into the city of Samaria. And he preached Christ to them. And the multitudes, look at the results. The multitudes with one accord heeded the thing spoken by Philip. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. You know what we need in our churches today? We not only need to hear the word, we need to see the word in action. We not only need to hear good messages right. and good sermons mm. and revelatory word, but we need to see the confirmation of yes. that word. Yes. We need to see the revelation yes. and the manifestation yes. of the word of yes. God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what the early church did. Under his ministry, look at that again. They heard the word and they saw the miracles yes. which they did. Mm. And then look at this. Powerful anointing on this man's ministry. For unclean spirits cried out with a loud voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Came out of many who were possessed. Because how many know when the presence of the Lord is, demons cannot stay. Right. right. Yeah. When you're walking in the, in the anointing of God, those demons start to flare up. I see demons flare up. Yeah. When I'm walking in that anointing. Mm. Yeah. When I'm walking in that overflow. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even get a chance to cast out demons because they get so scared. <laughs> they gotta run. They gotta leave. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Come on. Yes. Unclean spirits came out of people, it said, with a loud voice that were possessed. Mm. And it says, those that were paralyzed and the lame mm. were healed. Mm. And watch verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. You know why there was great joy in that city? Because people were getting saved. People were getting delivered. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes, it is. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but one of the signs that you know God is moving is there will be joy. Amen. There will be happiness. Yes. Man, if you're going to church and you look like you've been baptized in lemon juice, you need to get saved. <laughs> yes. Man, yes. church ought to be exciting. Yes. Where Jesus is, there ought to be life. Where Jesus is, there ought to be victory. Where Jesus is, there ought to be vi vibration. There ought to be healing. There ought to be miracles. There ought to be evidence of God's work. So he was doing great. His ministry was doing great. Massive anointing on his life. Because we serve a great and a mighty God. And when we just step out in faith and believe the word, God will demonstrate his power. Hallelujah. 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 
But now God, through an angel, we're reading our story today, that God through an angel speaks to him and says, I want you to put a pause for just a moment. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want you to put a pause for just a moment on your global international ministry, really, which was actually in a city called Samaria. Mm. I'm telling you, you would see results in Samaria, a place of people that had no covenant with God. Right. Mm. Because when you have a calling on your life, when there's an anointing on your life, God gives you a specific geographical location that there's a specific anointing in that area, unlike another place. Right. I've seen it. I've seen it with Reinhard Bunky. When the Lord called that man, he's with the Lord now. Mm -hmm. But one day I remember hearing him talk about how the Lord gave him a vision of a blood-washed Africa. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a vision for America. He didn't have a vision for Mexico, right. United States, and Canada. Right. But he had a vision. This geographical location was Africa. Mm -hmm. And he saw many miracles. In fact, at one time, he saw over a million people go to his crusade at one service. Mm -hmm. Over a million people right. in attendance, right. hearing the gospel, Amen. getting healed, getting saved, getting delivered. Amen. So there's certain areas that God calls people to. Mm -hmm. that's, a, uh, that's an anointing and the, the favor of God is on that area unlike any other place. Mm -hmm. So in Samaria, God was speaking, using him. But then the angel said, I want you to get up and I want you to go to a desert place. I want you to go to a place where it's dry. I want you to go to a place where, where we need some churches planted. I want you to go to a place where we need to see the anointing in Samaria touch them. And God allowed this to happen. And I want you to know that when you hear God tell you to do something, you need to move quick, fast, in a hurry. Because God is up to something. When God tells you to move, it's not to move in defeat. Right. It's not so you can move in chaos. It's because God's transitioning you. Amen. God's moving you from one place to another. Yes. And so now we find him, he, an, an angel of the Lord tells him, Philip, I want you to go from, uh, from where you're at to Gaza and I, there's, there's, there's going to be a desert road. It's not like Samaria. You're not going to see anything. It, it's going to look dry. But I want you to go because I want you to know that Christian ministry is not just based upon what you see on the outside. Mm. Christian ministry is a calling of God on your life. Amen. And I, I want you to go wherever I tell you to go. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And all of a sudden, a man is driving his chariot named, we don't know his name, but he was an Ethiopian man who had an official title working there with the queen. He more than likely served in the palace of that queen. And he was a eunuch, meaning that, of course, most of them at that time, they, they, they did not have really any um, physical testimonies at that moment. That's what they were called that. And so they were set apart. They were castrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, at this particular time, the Bible also tells us that, that this Ethiopian was, uh, he was from Africa. Mm -hmm. And he came from Africa, but he came Wanting to worship God at Jerusalem. Mm. So he had a heart mm. of hunger. Mm -hmm. He had a heart that wanted to learn the, some things of God. Amen. Let me tell you something. When you have a heart and you have a desire to be in God's house yeah. and to hear his word, you will come filled. Yeah. Bible says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, yeah. for they yeah. shall be filled. Amen. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. God will fill you if you're hungry. Yes, he will. And he was hungry, but... And he also had an assignment. He was over the money. He was over the treasure. And so he was an important man. Mm. But now we find him parked in some rest area in that desert. He's parked in his chariot, taking a break. And he's reading his Bible. Mm. He's reading the Bible. Amen. He, he, he wasn't watching the Super Bowl. Come on. <laughs> He wasn't looking at Sports Illustrated. Come on, somebody. Right now. He wasn't looking at Forbes magazine. Yeah, yeah. He was looking and reading the Word. Amen. Amen. He was hungry for God. Right. And he's going through the Old Testament scrolls. And he, he's reading. He gets stuck reading Isaiah's prophecy. Mm -hmm. That there will be a sheep that will go before, be slaughtered before the others. Mm -hmm. And he's reading this and it says, who would declare his generation? And he's stuck. 
Like Chuck, reading the Word. It may never have been reading the Word, but you didn't understand the Word. Right, right. But he's hungry for God. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit tells Philip, go talk to him. Mm. Go approach him. Mm. Go where I tell you to go. See, that's real ministry. Yes. Real ministry doesn't have a selfish agenda. That's right. Real ministry is you go where God tells you to yes. go. Yes. You yes. minister whether it's two or whether it's yes. 2,000. It doesn't yes. matter. You go where God tells you to go. Right. Notice the transition. Mm. He went from thousands that he was ministering to in Samaria, multitudes, to now one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. Because the same God that anointed him for the multitudes is the same God that wants to touch him using him one-on-one. -on -one. See, you don't know what God can do right. if you right. just invite somebody to lunch mm. and you tell someone about Jesus. The same anointing that's here yes. is the same anointing that can be with you in that conversation yes. Yes. and talk to someone about the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So the Lord tells him, the Spirit of God tells him, go near him. And guess what? He gets near him. He says, what are you reading? Oh, I'm reading the prophet Isaiah, but I don't know who was he talking about. He was reading about Jesus. It was the, he was talking about in that passage of scripture that he was reading, it was making reference to the suffering servant Messiah, Jesus. But he didn't know who it was. And so the guy, the Ethiopian man says, jump on in, come on up. He invites him to come in. Listen, I believe that if you have a heart to witness and you have a heart to share the good news to somebody, Amen. God will open up a door. Yes. God will make a way yes. where there yes. seems to be no way. Yes. There'll never be any time you have to, you don't have to wait. God will, will anybody hear me? If you really have a heart for God and you got something to say, people will ask you for help. Mm, people will ask you for questions. Yes. And so that he says, hop on up. Get on the bus, Gus. Don't need to discuss, mother. Just drop off the keys. No, he didn't say that. He said, get on the, get on the chariot. And he scooted over. Tell me, what does this mean? He said, you're reading about Jesus. You're reading about the Lord, Amen. the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He said, wow, Jesus. Yeah, he's the one that I've been preaching all over Samaria. Mm -hmm. He's the one that changed my life. He's the one that, that got a hold of my life. And yes. The old song says by Dallas Home that Jesus got a hold of my life and I won't let him go. Mm -hmm. Jesus got into my heart, got into my soul. Yeah. Well, I used to be oh, so sad. But now I'm free and glad. Because Jesus got a hold of my life and it won't let me go. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's what happened to me. Amen. Jesus got a hold of my life Amen. and it won't let me go. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And he starts sharing his faith with this Ethiopian man from Africa. And it doesn't matter where you come from. Right. If you have a hunger for God, God can use you. If you have a hunger for God, God can change you. God can save your life. Amen. God can take a nobody and make him a somebody. Yes, he can. Amen. Amen. And so he changes that man's life. And as they're, at some point, they start moving again on that chariot. At some point, they start talking and he's listening. And he's ministering to him as he's going. He probably told him, hey, look, we got to go. My break is over. I'm going to get in trouble if I don't, if I don't go to Jerusalem. I got I to gotta stay on track. And my break is over. All right, well, let's just keep moving then. Watch this, the momentum of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And then he says, hey, look at that water. He says, I sure like to get water baptized. Mm. He tells Philip, I've been dreaming about getting water baptized. And by the way, that word in the Greek baptismal that is used in the book of Acts, it doesn't mean to be sprinkled. Mm. <laughs> I love you, Catholic friends. <laughs> it doesn't mean to be sprinkled. It means to be immersed. Yes. It means to be sunk. A Christian water baptism doesn't sprinkle you. Right. You get in all the way. Come on. And then it's a type. It represents that you go down to sin. The power of sin is broken. And you come up alive in the resurrection power of God as a new creation. He said, what have I got to do? What hinders me, he says. What hinders me from getting water baptized? He said, you got to believe in Jesus Christ. He said, if you believe in Jesus, I'll baptize, I'll baptize you right now. Mm. I'm not going to baptize you if you're not saved. He said, but if you believe in Jesus, that's what he told him. You ought to read your Bible. Mm -hmm. He said, what hinders me? He said, what am I going to do? 
pastor to get baptized in water. <laughs> you got to get saved. That's right. You got to get born again. Yes. If you have the conscious understanding that Jesus Christ has forgiven you of your sins and you no longer want to live that life again and you repent of it and turn away from it, mm -hmm. then you are a true believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes. He said, I believe in the Son of God. I believe, that's what he said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Does anybody this morning believe that Jesus Christ is the yes, Son yes, of the living God? Yes, yes. Hallelujah. We got any believers in the house this morning? changed my life. Thank God I'm a believer now. Everything's going to be fine. Amen. I grew up listening to Dallas Home. I, I like that name, Dallas Home. I said, man, what, what, what kind of guy is named Dallas? Right. Man, it's like Oral Roberts. Who names their child Oral, you know? Like Dallas. Wow. Dallas Home. Thank God I'm a believer. Are, are you glad you're a believer yeah, this morning? Yeah. I said, are you glad you're a believer this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. And so they stopped. They stopped. They got down out of that chariot. And they both go to the water. And they get baptized. I don't know if anybody here this morning. I, 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 got, I got baptized at a church that had a water baptismal at their church. We didn't have one at our church. It was called Thimble Hits on My Knee. We didn't have one. But when we got saved, the pandemonium hit our church. And I, a lot of young people got saved. I mean, we had revival hit our church. And Thimble Hits on My Knee one day. Then uh, we asked the pastor if we could get baptized. Uh, but he said, I don't have a baptism. And I don't know what happened. He said, but next door. Woo! The brothers next door. There were some black brothers of the Lord. And they had a water baptism. And so we had to go next door. Amen. And, uh, and get baptized there. Praise God. Like we had to go next door a couple of times. Y'all remember that? Had to go a couple of times and baptize some people next door as well. Praise God. Because every Baptist has a baptism. I don't know, you know. I was talking to the pastor one day. I said, man, y'all got such a beautiful baptism. I talked to this pastor. He was a Baptist. I said, pastor, y'all have such a beautiful water baptism. He said, that's because we're Baptist. That's what Baptists do. We baptize people. I said, oh, that's what you're called Baptists. Okay, I got you. But anyway, I'm thinking about getting like a, one of those things, uh, bins, and we're going to baptize you that want to get baptized. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, because I don't know where we're going to go to Comanche Park again. I don't know. I don't know where we're going to go to Rosedale. I don't know where we're going to go and find a swimming pool. So praise God. But anyway, so they go down to the river. Mm. Well, I'm waiting down here at the river where you come, Lord Jesus. Mm, yeah, I remember Reverend Barnes, Reverend F.C. Barnes. Oh, okay. Yep. Satan don't want me to cross. No, Satan don't want me to cross. But I'm waiting down here at the river where you come, Lord Jesus. If you don't come to my rescue, I'll be lost. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you mad you got a saved pastor? Come on, somebody. I may not be the best preacher. I may not be the best preacher. I may not be the D.D. Jake that you want to hear. But I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. Thank you. So they go down to the river. They get baptized. Anybody ever been to the river to get baptized? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, I was in a church. Thank God we had AC and stuff. <laughs> but uh, anybody got baptized at a swimming pool outdoors? We got any outdoor water baptism participants? Okay, all right. So imagine Philip and this Ethiopian. He just got saved. Because let me tell you something. Parents, don't ever give up on your children and your family. Because the word of God, the Bible says, is like a hammer. Yes. And it's working in their hearts. Mm. They may not come give their life to Jesus. It might be service after service. You see them still cutting up. 
You know what I'm saying? They don't even want to be in the house of God. But one day, the Holy Ghost is going to get them, is going to break them, is going to shake them, and they're going to run to the altar and give their hearts to God. Because yeah. the Word of God is like a hammer, and it breaks the pride, mm. breaks the religion, yeah. breaks the questions. Right. And all of a sudden, something's going to happen to our children. Something's going to happen to people that don't know the Lord. Yeah. And this is what's going to happen. They're going to realize, wait a minute, the enemy has been speaking lies, lies, lies. So they both go down to the river. What I want to love about Philip? What I love about Philip is uh, he went down with him. He didn't just get back. He didn't say, okay, you go ahead and do yourself and I'll speak it from here. <laughs> See, a real man, a woman of God, let me tell you what a real shepherd does. A real shepherd. If he's, has a, if he's a real pastor, he has the heart of God to pastor that church. Let me tell you, sheep and shepherds, they smell like sheep. <laughs> a shepherd, a real shepherd, Smells like sheep. Mm. They go down with you. Yeah. They go to the hospital yeah. if they can. They go and pray for you. They answer your texts. They answer your, your, your messages because they want to connect with you. They want to be with you. They don't just say, okay, y'all prayer team. Y'all pray. I'll see you Wednesday. No. You know what a real pastor does? He gets in that atmosphere of prayer. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he soaks himself in prayer. Amen. Because he wants to smell like a sheep. And that's what Philip did. Yeah. He soaks himself in the water with them. He said, let's go. Y'all ready? In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. I don't know what he said. But they went down. And they were supposed to come up together. But something happened. Somebody say the momentum of the Holy Spirit. Because now, Philip disappeared. Now, the Ethiopian man, he got up like normal. Almost normal. He got up. And he couldn't see Philip anymore. What happened? Oh my Lord, he drowned. <laughs> I knew we shouldn't have come to this river. They tell me that there's a lot of drownings going on in this country. No. The Bible uses a word, two words in the Greek. It says he got caught away. It's the Greek word heart decent. Hard adiso, which means to seize, to pull, to pluck, to take violently from one place to another. Amen. It means in the Greek to take it by force. Mm -hmm. Something happened all of a sudden, a miracle of God. Can you imagine going to your water baptism service and you come up and you get baptized and Pastor Mark disappears? <laughs> The guys holding you disappear. That's what happened. They had a water baptism ceremony, but one of the the one that was functioning it during the ceremony took off, <laughs> left. Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> Can you put up, please, First Thessalonians chapter four, verse sixteen? It's the same Greek word that is used here. First Thessalonians chapter four. Verse 16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. We always talk about Gabriel's trumpet is going to blow with the rapture. It's not Gabriel's, it's God's. Amen. It's the trumpet of God. Yeah. And the dead in Christ will rise first. He's not talking about all those sleeping Christians. <laughs> it says, And then we who are alive and remain, look at what it says, will be caught up. Yeah. Same Greek word, heart, disasso, which means to be taken up violently, mm. together with them in the clouds, to be the Lord of the air, and this we shall always be with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the rapture of the church. Yes, yeah. hallelujah. You cannot find the word rapture in the Bible, mm. but the principle and the concept and the truth is there. Amen. Because the rapture is the event that needs no sign, that needs no great tribulation period to go through. I have some pastor friends that believe in the mid-trip that we're going to have to go through three and a half years of tribulation. Then God's going to come midway. And then I got some friends that believe we're going to go through the whole seven years. And I call that the post-trip. But I believe in the pre-trip. So if you want to stick around and meet the Antichrist and shake hands, you go ahead and hug yourself. But I'm taking the first great house. Yeah. I said I'm taking the first great house.
pray for us. I've gone through enough tribulation. I wish I had a witness yeah. somebody. Amen. I've gone through enough suffering in this world. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> oh, I've never been this homesick before. Well, I see the bright light shine. Yes. And it's just about home time. Yes. And I can see my father standing by the door. Now, this world. Can I get a witness? Yeah. When I'm waiting for deliverance, yeah. yeah. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Yeah. Well, I see the bright light shine, and it's just about home time. We don't have a whole lot of time left. Right. And I can see my father standing. Can you see him? Yeah. By the door. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Anybody homesick for heaven? I said, is anybody homesick for heaven? Oh, you can stay in this world if you want. But I'm ready to meet my Jesus. I want to get my mansion. And, and I'm going to get excited when I, they tell me there's your mansion. And I'm going to get excited when they say, there's your mama waiting for you. There's your daddy waiting for you. Hallelujah. There's your grandma waiting for you. Hallelujah. There's your sister waiting for you. There's your aunt and uncle. I'm going to get excited about that. But they're going to say, well, wait a minute. There's Jesus coming. Your Lord and your Savior. Oh, hallelujah. How many I can't wait to see Jesus? Amen. How about He's so holy, I bowed on my knees and cried, holy, holy is the Son of God. Amen. That's what we're going to do yes. when we get to heaven. We're going to cry, holy, holy, holy Amen. is the Lord God Almighty. Mercy me wrote a song that says, I can only imagine what heaven will be like. Right. I can only imagine how it's going to be like. Will we bow? Will we shout? Will we hug Jesus? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. We're all going to be in awe of the glory of God. I'm talking about the momentum. I'm talking about the momentum of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. That's what happened to Philip. God caught him away like he's going to catch away the church one day. All of a sudden, some of us are going to be working. Maybe you mamas are going to be making some enchiladas at home. <laughs> Maybe you're going to be at Bacaria Jalisco numero dos. And all of a sudden, when the rapture happens, the waitress and the waitress are going to look and say, what happened to her? They're going to see your coat on that chair. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're going to see your pantalones there. They're going to see your shoes there. Yeah. What happened? And they're going to look around, and there's other people. Some of you here today watching my Facebook, you got loved ones that are saved, but you're not saved. You got a mama that's saved, but you're not saved. You got a daddy that's saved, but you're not saved. You got a brother that's saved, but you're not saved. When the rapture happens, you're going to be wondering where your brother's at. You're going to be wondering where your sister's at. Yeah. You're going to be wondering where your mom's at. Yeah. And there ain't going to be nowhere to be found because they're going to be caught up yeah. in the momentum of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. They're going to be caught up. Yeah. Your life was filled with guns and war. And all of us got trampled on the floor. I wish we'd all been ready. The children died. Pain grew old. A piece of bread could buy that bag of gold. I wish we'd all been ready. Cause there's no time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left behind. A man and wife, a sleeping bed, 
She hears a noise and turns her head, he's gone. I wish we'd all been ready. Two men walking up a hill, one disappears and one left standing still. I wish we'd all been ready Cause there's no time to change your mind The sun has come and you've been left behind Oh, there's no time to change your mind The sun has come and you've been left behind The Father spoke the demons died Oh how could you Have been so blind Cause there's no time To change your mind The sun has come And you've been left behind Amen. I feel that this morning yes. There's no time To change your mind the sun has come, you've been left behind. I feel the Holy Ghost wants me to stop right here. I haven't even begun my message. But I feel the momentum of the Holy Spirit. We don't have a whole lot of time left. Jesus is coming soon. That song that I sang right now was written in the 70s. 1970s when the movies came out, The Distant Thunder, yep. The Thief in the Night. And God began to speak to people that it's time that we get right with God. The song says again, there's no time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left behind. No, there's no time to change the sun has come and you've been left behind. I pray that nobody in this church get left behind. I pray nobody watching me by Facebook gets left behind. What happened to Philip that day is going to happen to the church. Now God still had a plan for Philip. He didn't catch up a way to go to heaven just yet. He still had a work to do. Took him to another place. Or didn't have time to talk about it. But that other place that he went to had some strongholds. It was ruled and governed by the Philistines. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to sound like a preacher of bleak and bad, sad news. But my Bible says that evil men is going to get worse and worse. Yeah. This world's not going to get better. This world's going to get worse. Gas prices are probably not going to get better. Things that are happening, the White House, laws that are being passed right now, things are not getting better. Things are going to get worse. God's about ready to catch his church away. Are you ready to meet Jesus? Are you ready Amen. to meet Jesus? Amen. This could be the day that God takes us in. This could be the day you might not even make it home today. You might not make it to lunch this afternoon. The Lord may take us away today. No sign has to happen. It could happen today. And I don't know why the Holy Ghost is telling me to stop right here. Just to make sure everyone in this live service today, I want to ask you a question. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Because one day, one day, it's going to be too late. One day, it's going to be too late. And we're all going to be gone. And it's going to be harder for you if you stay. If you get left behind when the church goes home to heaven, if you stay behind, it's going to be hard serving the Lord. Yeah. You think it's hard now serving God. Mm. 
it's going to be harder when the church is gone. Because really the only thing, the only thing that is holding this world together is the church. The church of Jesus Christ. Every head back and every eye closed. I feel the momentum of the Holy Spirit today. To let you know you don't have a whole lot of time left. That's why your Bible says today is the day of salvation. You know, I was thinking the other day. Of how God set me free. He saved me when I was 14 years of age I was messed up I was on my way to a devil's hell I had a friend that said hey what are you doing on Friday and every Friday night we'd go to the sportatorium in Dallas, Texas and go watch the Von Erics beat up the Freebirds and we'd go watch Kamala the Uganda giant we'd go watch Kabuki every Friday but what my mom and dad didn't know was that they would drop me off I was exposed to prostitution, yeah. drunkards, beer, mm. women. Mm. I'm talking 12, 13 years of age. I'm getting exposed to the nightlife. Mm. I'm getting exposed to womanizing. Mm. I'm getting exposed to alcohol. All these things all around me. And I know the devil wanted me to serve him. The devil was after me. The devil wanted to destroy Mark Mata when I was 12 years old, when I was 13. But somebody was praying for me. I said somebody was praying for me. I had a mama and a grandma and a dad that was praying for me. And somebody had been praying for you, sir. Somebody had been praying for you, ma'am. And the Lord got a hold of my life. Saved me when I was 14. Yeah, I had battles. Yeah, I still had problems. Yeah, I still had to wrestle the flesh. And sometimes the enemy got the best of me. But the Lord snatched me out of darkness. Called me out of darkness. And by the grace of God, I'm still standing serving the Lord Jesus Christ today. can have this Jesus that I've been preaching about today. He's not mad at you. I want to tell you tonight, today, wherever time you're watching this, you in this room today, God is not mad at you. God is madly in love with you. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows the abuse you went through. He knows the scars that are in your heart. But he took that bee sting for you. The stinger is in his hands. He said, if you come unto me, I'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I'm going to count to three this Sunday morning. And I'll tell you what, the Lord had another plan, didn't he? The Lord wanted us to hear this message today. I wasn't planning on doing this. I had another thing planned out. But the Holy Spirit dropped this in my heart. You give them an invitation right now to make sure that they're ready to meet Jesus. I'm going to count to three. When I say the number three, raise up that hand. And you say, preacher, pastor, I want Jesus in my heart. I promise I will not embarrass you. You can pray right there where you're sitting. You can pray right there where you're at. I promise I won't embarrass you. I just want to lead you to Christ today. The God that changed my life is the God that can change your life. Watching by Facebook, find a place right there in your living room, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, in your home, maybe in the break room, maybe in your vehicle, pull over to the side. And make that car an altar. Because I'm about ready to pray for you as well. That you will not get left behind. That when that trumpet of God sounds, you'll be ready. You'll be caught up to be with the Lord. One, this is it. 
Come on, the devil has no power. The devil has no power. All you got to do is say, Jesus, touch me. Jesus, change me. And the devil's going to have to let you go. Two. This is it. You know, the biggest thing that has sent more people to hell away from God is the word tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll get saved, you might say. All right, next Sunday, Pastor, I got some things I got to clean up this week. No. Let the Lord, the Holy Ghost, clean them up for you. You don't have to clean up your act to get saved. If that were the case, then we wouldn't need Jesus to die on the cross. Because he died on the cross, he said, let me clean you up. Let me save you. Let me wash you. And I said that number three. Those of you watching my Facebook and those of you here in this live service, I want you to raise that hand when I say three. And say, preacher, pray for me. Because I want to make sure that heaven's my home. I want to make sure that when that trumpet of God sounds, I'm caught up with the Lord. Three, raise up that hand. God bless you. I see those hands all over this room. Anybody else? I want to make sure I'm caught up to be with the Lord. All right, let's do something together. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you're watching my Facebook, thank you. Let's all stand to our feet. Can I get you to stand to your feet? I know you've been sitting for a while. But it, it means something when, you, when you're serious about God. You take that stand. All right. Now, right there where you're at, lift your hands to the Lord. You're watching by Facebook, live stream. Lift your hands. I see someone kneeling at their home, their bedside. I see someone kneeling with their wife. I, I see a couple holding hands with one another. Say, say honey, we got to pray together to make sure we're right with God. Let's do it right now, church. Let's go home knowing with confidence and assurance that heaven is our home. And that we're not going to hell, but we're going to heaven. And I'm not going to get left behind. But I'm going to get right with God today. So say this prayer to me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, I give you my heart. I give you my heart. And I give you my life. And I give you my life. I believe. I believe. You died on the cross. You died on the cross. And you shed your blood. And you shed your blood. For all my sins. For all my sins. Wash me right now. Wash me right now. And make me whole. Make me whole. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. In my heart. In my heart. And in my life. And in my life. I feel your presence. I feel your presence. I feel your spirit. I feel your spirit. Speaking to me right now. Speaking to me right now. And I want to be ready. And I want to be ready. For the coming of the Lord. Coming of the Lord. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to make heaven my home. To make heaven my home. And I want to be ready. I want to be ready to be with you forever. To be with you forever. I accept you right now. I accept you right now. As my Lord and my Savior. As my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of every sin in my life. Forgive me of every sin in my life. And I declare today. And I declare today. In this house. In this house. Wherever I'm at. Wherever I'm at. I am saved. I am saved. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap and a little praise. Can we just worship the Lord for just a few moments before we go home? Let's all sing, I'm ready now. I'm ready now. Hallelujah. I'm ready now. Oh, we're ready to meet Jesus.
to say congratulations yeah. to every one of you who made Jesus Christ yeah. your Lord and your Savior this morning. Congratulations. This is the beginning. This is only the beginning. You're in the incubators right now. Amen. You're in the nursery room right now. You're going to have to take little baby steps. But you're a believer. But you're walking with God. Keep coming to church. Get a Bible. Read that Bible every day. This Wednesday, I want to bless you with some more devotion. So if you don't have a devotion, I'm going to, I'm going to give you some. But do whatever you got to do for yourself to invest in the Word of God. Be in prayer. We have prayer tomorrow morning or tomorrow night. Maybe we should do it tomorrow morning. I don't know. <laughs> Praise God. David said, oh, God, early in the morning I was here. Did that just slip out? Maybe we need to get up here in the morning and seek the Lord. But no, 7 o'clock. Maybe you can say, thank you, God, for what you did for me today. Amen. Praise God. And I'll finish with this. After Philip left that Ethiopian man in the water by himself, he eventually got back on his chariot, that Ethiopian man. And he went on his way back still to Jerusalem. But you know what the Bible says? One word I want you to remember. I want you to remember this when you eat lunch today. I want you to remember this. Look at somebody tell him, Pastor wants me to remember something. I want you to remember this, Brother Edward. I want you to remember this, Joshua. I want you to remember this, Philippa. Don't ever forget it. The Bible says that when that man got back on his church, after he got saved, after he got water baptized, he goes back to Jerusalem. The Bible says something happened to him. Because he went back rejoicing. Amen. See, when you get saved, when you get saved, joy, happiness comes in your heart. I still remember the day, Brother Roy, I got saved. November 25th, Sunday night, 1984, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I still remember my mom and dad, we didn't have no more money. We ran out of money on that trip because my dad had to fix the van that broke down. You know, the devil didn't want me to get saved and my sister got saved the same day. You know that the devil fought so hard for me and my sister not to get saved. He made that van broke down that we traveled with. The van broke down. Oh, the devil was mad, but I'm glad another soul he thought he had. I was so full of joy. My sister was so full of joy. Our family was so full of joy. It's like, oh, now we know why the van broke down. Everybody got sick. Now I know why everybody got sick. Jesus came into my heart. Jesus came into my life. Glory to God. I said, I said, Dad, you don't have to. We were hungry because how many know when you go to church after church you get hungry? How many are hungry right now? We were hungry. Like, how many? How many had a conversation this morning before you came to church and you said, uh, what are you gonna eat for church? What are we gonna eat?
salvation with our new brothers and our new sisters in Christ today. We welcome them in the family of God. We welcome them to the kingdom of God. Those that are here in this person, live that we're here today, Lord, thank you for what you did in their hearts. Keep that joy and that momentum of God flowing. And Lord, bless those that have been watching us. God, that you meet their every need. In Jesus' name. Amen. And all the God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Prayer tomorrow at 7. And Wednesday night, I'll be teaching part two, increasing God's way. Praise God.